Your name's Jim Bob, right? Uh-huh. And, um... Uh, G-E-M-B-O-B. That's one? Film Me. What's that? That's Film Me. Film Me. Oh, okay, yeah. Let's see over here. Okay. The tent next to that is where he stayed. He had a blue car and he ran uh, two people over, one of whom died. The dream she had clung to so desperately. Okay, now smile and say cheeseburger. Cheeseburger! It is often pointed out that Americans view themselves as the center of the universe. And when you look at the stories we've been told all our lives, it's not hard to see why. Most people living in the developed world today grew up consuming American media in one form or another. More than anything else, America's greatest export to the world is culture. But some cultures are too complex to be consumed, some stories too important to be packaged and sold. Over the decades, the endless stream of American media seems to blend together, following a similar script, a familiar cast, and a predictable plot. It's a game we've all played before, a movie we've all seen, a reality TV version of America projected onto reality itself. In order to pull back the curtain of show business, my journey begins at the source of it. Nestled between the scenic coastline and mountainous desert, an endless sprawl of strip malls, commercial centers, and neighborhoods make up the Los Angeles County. Starting with indigenous tribes, settled by Spaniards and built by American ambition, each century brought a new wave of people and opportunities to the region. Natural beauty and cultural diversity make LA a promised land for over 10 million people. But even on the scenic coastline of Venice Beach, the Angelinos warn me of trouble in paradise. see you in Hollywood. Thank you, guys! You're through to Hollywood. Yes! 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 yes.
soldiers is better food for your soul. Food like when God fed man to the people in the wilderness. And your hard head like the people in the wilderness. God said a time and time. Hell yeah. The glory days of Hollywood might be over, but on any given day, it's still one of the most popular tourist destinations in America. People flock here as a sort of pilgrimage, eager to gaze at the idols and landmarks they've only seen in media. Celebrity culture is ingrained into the very foundation of Hollywood. It's etched into the stars that line the Walk of Fame, only to be pissed on and trampled like every other street in LA. Frosty's experience with cops sheds light on the rising tension between law enforcement and the homeless. And as I would find out later, he's not alone in his criticism of authority. With an outdated business model and a culture that eats its own insides, modern day Hollywood is going through an identity crisis. From Sunset Boulevard to West Hollywood, rainbow flags and symbols of sexual diversity are proudly displayed alongside billboards of celebrity and entertainment. The city covers itself in colorful messages in an effort to make people feel good on the surface, but all the advertisements in the world aren't enough to distract from the abject poverty living on the streets below. I met a man taking a bath in the West Hollywood Fountain. What's your name? Ah, baby Jesus. Baby Jesus. They call me Baby Jesus. <laughs> I tried to get an idea of what his life story was and how he ended up here, but he was more interested in singing than talking. Are you a musician? Yes, of course. I'm a musical engineer. Yes. Yeah. You think it's a good city for artists? Yeah, no. No, hell no. This city? No, because every artist that's here is a small little bitch. Thanks to anybody. I'm a cow, boy. Initially, I was cautious to approach Baby Jesus. It's easy to write him off as another crazy homeless man. But as I looked deep into his eyes, I began to see him instead as a lost soul. Some days I feel like I'm a goddamn king. I'm my own worst enemy. Now follow me. What if the grass on the other side? In LA, it's normal to see people like baby Jesus wandering around. It's normal to see people sleeping on the same sidewalk as a busy restaurant. And it's normal to be completely numb to all of it. Los Angeles has no shortage of pride, but it could use some humility. But it means anyway, the three of us said yes, so guess what? Welcome, Welcome to, to Hollywood. Hollywood. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. In 
In an effort to learn more about the evolving homeless situation, I set out to find the hot spots of poverty in LA. I was told the Veterans Park would be a good place to start. So I headed out expecting to see a park full of homeless people. But as I got closer, it became immediately obvious that this was not your typical park. Just outside the VA campus, a village of tents lined the perimeter, each one proudly bearing the American flag. Seeing the stark contrast of patriotism and poverty raised many questions in my head. And almost as soon as I arrived, I was led to a man who was willing to provide answers. Um, e -M -B -O -B. That's filming. What's that? That's filming. Filming. Oh, okay, yeah. Let's see over here. Let's okay. Despite resembling a walking Getson flag, I quickly learned that Jem Bob was held in high regard by the veteran community and that he wasn't afraid to speak his mind. Cleaned up, you fuck. Who moved that? Don't let him move that again. Fuck. Sorry, bro. <laughs> no, it's all good. Some idiot, like some chick, shit in a bucket, and then the, the dude that was cleaning my area up. To punish them, he threw it in the street. I'm like, dude, how does that yeah, to punish them no, at all? Definitely not. Not, not not smart at all, and that wasn't him. That was another. And then he's moving the thing. I'm covering it up, and he's moving it because he's a fucking retard too. We should go into that tree. I think. Yeah, let's that's do the it. Best player, okay? Okay. This is my shit. That's what I need. All right, I'll go. Let's go. Okay, so uh, this is uh, Veterans Row here. If you take a nice perusal, right behind that fence there is uh, the West LA VA. Currently, there's, a, uh, there's only 58 veterans that live on campus, and there's nobody living in them, and it's just disgusting. And we're stuck out here living in these tents they have us out here. I soon found out that veterans are only allowed to stay on campus under the condition that they comply with a curfew and a ban on drugs and alcohol. It's understandable why a large portion of veterans are either unable or unwilling to follow these rules, given the rates of drug addiction they suffer from and the harsh conditions they endure day after day. Eventually, they were able to wear me down and get rid of me because of my right leg. As you can see right here, it's still there. So that's been there for now for uh, something like, uh, you almost ready? 20 months. Wow. Yeah. The VA campus presents veterans with a choice. Either follow our rules or get out. And the row of American flags deliver a message loud and clear. These veterans value freedom over safety. We're all treated by our country, badly treated by our government. How do you, what is the difference between those two things to you? Okay, well, we all, while we, while we all are the government, we the people, at the end of the day, once we elect officials, they are able to, uh, you know, make policies and such that we might not agree with. Governor, California has the nation's highest housing costs, highest gasoline prices, and highest utilities. In a very real sense, the California dream is more like a mirage for people grinding it out day after day. How do you make the case that you, as governor, can deliver the California dream to all Californians? Well, let's talk about what we all saw number one in, Stephanie. And guys, forgive me, I know I'm a little pointed today, but I've been taking a lot from a few folks for a lot of months, so it's nice to be able to express myself, too. But I do with deep pride in this state. Can we take a break? I'll, I'll answer yeah, some yeah, more questions. Yeah. We're going to go here. Yeah, this, yeah. this is a drop-off. You should film this. Okay. This is a donation. Okay. Yes. 
I'm just going to put this back there. I didn't mean to know. I didn't. I think I smashed it. I was the hospital. I will. I will. Hey, nobody's allowed in my tent. I got you, bro. I got you. Not even me. Okay. I'm not allowed. I'm keeping the week. I'm not allowed. I got it. I got it. I'm not allowed. Okay. You guys kind of rely on people's goodwill and donations to survive out here. By far, absolutely. Uh, we all, you know, we. I mean, I, I'm on. Uh, I gotta put this down. It's too heavy. This guy, see that? See that? See what he did? Here? See how he did that on purpose? You know, uncovered the human feces, right? Because he's a fucking asshole. Uh, yeah, you know, just to speak. You can play some, play some music. Well, it's been pretty hectic down here. It's been, uh, it's been, uh, we had, uh, back in April, we had a uh, murder. We had uh, one, I, 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 don't, I, don't even think, I don't even think he was really a vet, but he ran somebody over, he ran two people over. Yeah, this guy right here is a perfect right example of the people that need to be freaking done something needs to be done. He should be, like, uh, institutionalized and shit, okay? The tent next to that is where he stayed. He had a blue car and he ran uh, two people over, one of who died. I mean, he like dragged the guy. It was terrible. I just heard it. I didn't even see it. And I had nightmares. Jesus. Well, it's pretty tough out here, bro. Yeah. The time I spent with Jim Bob at the Veterans Encampment was enlightening. If only for a moment, I got to experience what life is like for people living on the streets. Homeless veterans highlight the failures of a country that's unable to care for those that have served it. But the veterans of VA Park are proud of America and what it stands for, even if they aren't proud of its government. It sounds like you like America and what it represents, but not no, the government. No, no. No? Okay. Love. Love America. Love America. The homeless veterans showed me that just like pride, war also comes in many different forms. And this administration today, here and now, declares unconditional war on poverty in America. Beginning in 1964, cities across the U.S. have been using taxes to fund an ongoing effort to eliminate homelessness. In the decades since, the population of L.A. has doubled, making it the largest city in the United States and a key battleground for the war on poverty. Taxes are used to provide food stamps, income, and more recently, housing for the homeless. These programs are effective in helping people survive. But with no end in sight to the war on poverty, they only serve as a band-aid to a deep-rooted issue. Over the last decade, the homeless population has increased year after year, a trend that will likely continue for the foreseeable future. It's difficult to legislate away the problem of homelessness because it isn't one problem, but many. At the level of healthcare, a mental health crisis fractures families and communities. On a financial level, the gap of wealth inequality has never been greater. Homelessness is as much the result of an evolving economy as it is the sign of an unhealthy society. A year of lockdowns and restrictions has meant the closure of countless businesses. But where small businesses have failed, massive corporations have only expanded, resulting in the largest transfer of wealth in history. The effects of this economic shift can be seen plastered across the abandoned buildings of downtown LA. The pandemic only accelerated trends that were already in motion. And while people have returned to the streets, many businesses have not. Behind every sign that reads for lease is the story of a struggling family, the death of someone's dream, and a city that will never be the same. All the good folks, I ate right here. I live right here, I ate right here. When we was little kids, we had movie theaters here. My name is Jay Bay from the West Side. I'm original West Side, and uh, we 
You see, he's at Clifton's all the time. I'm from South Central. We had movies, the Los Angeles the Theater right there. It was the Los Angeles Theater. That's our theater. We had all the movies, Pam Greer, all the movie stars was in there. Jim Brown, all the original movies. Uh, we had everything there. You know what I'm saying? My, dad, my name is Jay Bay from the original West Side. And, uh, this was all downtown. I'm 60 years old. Woo woo. Man, it's nice meeting you. Nice to meet you. I'm Greg. My name is Jay Bay, man. Jay Bay. The original West Side. Uh, You'll meet me someday. All right. Yeah, all right. Go. You too. Like an arcade and a pool-like thing. Yeah. I just oh, wow. Like, wow. This is insane. On the eastern side of town, adjacent to the gentrified arts district, is an area known as Skid Row. Most people are uncomfortable even driving through here, let alone walking. And yet this place is home, or lack thereof, for thousands of tent dwellers. Taking a closer look, a local friend joined me on my stroll through Skid Row. Man, this is a uh, corner right here, and that's the homeless shelter. Walking through Skid Row feels like wandering around a war-torn country. The sidewalks are coated with a layer of grime, and the air is thick with a stench of decay. In every direction you look, people are suffering. From these streets, the LA dream is nothing but a mirage. Still, a ray of light shines through. While most Angelinos have grown numb to seeing homelessness on a daily basis, some of them have decided to do something about it. Okay. The sounds of music and people gathering led me to a street corner where I saw volunteers handing out food and water to the homeless. I spoke with a humble volunteer who wasn't comfortable being on camera. He told me about the organization he's a part of named Feed the Streets LA. He explained to me that they rely on donations of clothing and food to hand out in impoverished areas of town. Outreach groups like Feed the Streets LA may not solve the problems of homelessness overnight, but they are making a tangible difference in people's lives. Right. It's just like every other part of LA, it's a complicated story here. Meanwhile, the war on poverty is being waged on a new front. No. No. In the middle of the Venice boardwalk, with people walking by, a crazy fight breaks out between homeless men. Business owners in the area say fights like this happen all the time. A little bit like living in an insane asylum where the inmates are running it. Oh my gosh, tell me about this incredible location and then all the other locations that are popping up. Yeah, this is amazing. This is the very first tiny home community in the city of Los Angeles, 39 units, 75 beds. They're 64 square feet. They come with heat, air conditioning, four windows, a front door. Like Closures like this are popping up all over LA, turning swaths of land into space for subsidized housing. The tiny home villages allow anyone who meets the criteria of being homeless to apply and move in, as long as they are willing to pay with their freedom. The homeless population en masse now faces the same predicament as the outcast veterans. And like the veterans, many homeless people have chosen to remain free. But as law enforcement clear out more of the city, I fear that those on the streets may no longer have a choice. And 
this really is part of the solution to ending homelessness in Los Angeles because we are taking people out of encampments and moving them straight into these houses. And not only that, but you're also supplying their furry friends with even a dog run over here. That's right. We care for people on both ends of the leash. Even if the majority of homeless people willingly give up their rights to live under tiny house rules, the goal of housing some 60,000 homeless people in LA alone raises questions about long-term sustainability. A growing population of homeless people will require more government housing, raising taxes and shrinking an already devastated middle class, leading to even more poverty. If tiny houses do eliminate homelessness, it will come at the cost of creating a new class of people behind the fence. Yeah. yeah, they don't want me filming at all, but yet they have security cameras, so I don't know what sense that makes. Filming for a video. I just heard about this place. I just wanted to see it. That's all. That's why I'm asking to see if you want any information. Okay. I don't feel comfortable being on camera. Because I'm oh, well, okay. I'll turn it off. Tiny homes sound like a good idea, but what I saw looked more like a future prison than a friendly neighborhood. A house is not a home, and a tiny home village is not a community. I gotta tell you, man, it's a, it's a, it's a horrific thing to experience. And most of these guys, what they really need is purpose. Without purpose, you know, especially as, as men, it's just, it's, just, it's, a, it's just down the road to addiction, to mental illness. Where do you find your purpose? Um, trying to uh, do the right thing and fight against the power of, uh, of corruption that um, really Satan, really, is, you know, I fight against Satan. Hollywood sells us an image of what we want to see, but the streets of LA reveal a dark reality we often choose to ignore. We've all seen the people huddled in sleeping bags. We've all read the signs at a busy intersection, and we've all heard the streets that cry out for help. They could be our friends and family, our brothers and sisters, our fathers and mothers, or ourselves. For those living on the streets, real change comes from people willing to see others as themselves. Understanding a city as complicated as Los Angeles is no easy task. In the next part to this series, I'll be exploring the cultural communities that unite the city of angels and the fissures that divide it. If you enjoyed videos like this and you want to see more, consider supporting me on Patreon. To watch behind-the-scenes footage and full interviews, check out my second channel, Glink IRL. I'm grateful for the people that support my content, and I hope to continue sharing stories that matter in the future. Thanks for watching.